Good morning. I had to check a text message there. Wasn't sure what it was. Oh. Did you know? Hang on just a second. I'm getting some glare. Did you know that there's an election coming up next day? Gee, I wouldn't know. Really? You know, if you if you watch Fox, and as I've said over the years, I watch just enough before I throw up. It's any of the networks. I don't like any of them. But, you know, Fox is running these ads that this is the most important election of your life. Oh, please. That's what they said about 2020 and 2018 and 2016 and 14 and 12 and 10 and 8 and 6 and 4 and double odd. You know, this is all about gaining viewership and people tuning in and listening to propaganda. If I go to the other networks, they are not spending all of their time on the election. Of course, CNN, they're still focused on January 6th. Boy, that's kind of lost all of its steam, hasn't it? After their circus parade this summer, on prime time, it's just kind of gone away. And what's going to come out of this? And what about these people that have been detained in D.C. without a trial? I mean, have you not read the Constitution, a French speedy trial? Obviously, this isn't happening. Why? Hell, the insurgents down in Gitmo that we captured in Afghanistan and Iraq are getting better treatment than these idiots that stormed the Capitol. No, I did not support this. In fact, I don't know how many times I tweeted to Trump, stop this, stop this. I mean, the whole January 6th deal was a fiasco. Let, let's just admit it. Having this big rally was stupid. And what did they hope to accomplish? You know, in 16, when Trump was elected, how many chants did we hear across the United States? Not my president. Not my president. Not my president. And the senators, the, the Congress uh, people that stood before the Verification of the 16 vote, which Joe Biden presided over. What were there, 16 that uh, didn't agree with the turnout? Well, the liberals hadn't organized enough, or they would have stormed D.C. I mean, they were storming it over everything else. I mean, the big pussy march, remember that? And then they trashed the area and left it in utter disarray, but they didn't storm the Capitol. But they did try and shut down transportation across the country. Remember those idiots in Seattle that were stopping people from going to work? I mean, you know, all of this QAnon crap, they tried to blame it on that. Those people were fringe anyway. But the real question is, what angered all of those people to descend on D.C.? And how many of them were plants from fringe groups, whether they were left, whether they were the right, whether they were just there to cause destruction? And you can go back to Minneapolis during 2020 when they videotaped this white guy who was setting fire and breaking the glass at the parts store. 
and those people followed them, wanted to know who they were and what they were doing there, and they wouldn't respond to anything. What happened to them? But, yeah, we got an election on today. Do you know who you're voting for? Well, I do. Sure not voting for Beto O'Rourke, and I'm not a happy camper with Abbott, but he won the primary, and sadly, that's who I'm stuck with. I'm still pissed off over the ERCOT deal and of him protecting the borders of the state of Texas, which he has the authority by the Texas Constitution, and I covered this on BBS Radio 1. In depth, I read the Texas Constitution, and then I read the executive powers of the governor of the state of Texas. He could stop this. But it's a big political tool right now. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. I mean, if you remember, we had all these uh, migrant children at the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center in downtown Dallas. And. Abbott shows up with all of these troopers, which well, it was just a spectacle. It was a show. And the Fed said, you can't come in. The hell we can't. This is our state. We don't give a damn if you're paying rent. You can't just take over this center without our authorization. And uh, did Abbott and his massive troopers go in? No. No. Posturing, bad posturing, that's all it was. Now, for those who might be chuckling because I'm still wearing my Oklahoma State regalia, well, yeah, we got our ass kicked 48 to nothing. That was ugly, wasn't it? Very ugly. That's the worst loss Gundy's ever had. And uh, I've said this before, if he doesn't beat OU this year, before they in Texas head to the Southeast Conference. It's time for coaching change at Oklahoma State. I mean, that team, you could tell, they were worn out. How could they play so good against Texas and be so pathetically bad against K-State? I know what happens. But that's like there is no continuity with this, with this team. We have no deep threat. We have no tight end to worry about that strikes fear in defenders and K-State figured it out. Hey, they don't have deep threats. The only thing they've got is the bomb. And we saw that in the third quarter. They just kept throwing the bomb, trying to get a pass interference call or get lucky and he would catch one. And that didn't happen. Sanders cannot run the ball all the time. You're just wearing that kid out. That's all there is to it. He's a senior. He'll be done, but uh, he's not going to go out in a blaze of glory. He's going to go down with a bunch of injuries. And running backs were thin. That were, were just thin. So that tells me recruiting hasn't been that good. I know they've had injuries. Well, every team has injuries. Blah, blah, blah. It is what it is. But, yeah, there's an election. And, I mean, my God, you watch Fox and you think, like, Chicken Little, the sky is falling. And th this is the channel that right after the 2020 election talked about how all the polls need to be shut down. All those companies need to be shut down because they missed their margins by so much. And, of course, Tucker Carlson was leading the charge on that. But uh, within two months, all they were doing was talking about polls, talking about polls. In fact, their own poll, the Fox poll. And now they're making this big deal about Hochul and her contender and how it's less than a five-point lead. Hey, it's a five-point lead. And if the polls were so wrong in 2020, what makes you think the polls are right now? Oh, but it's headlines. And, of course, Harris tries to be so, so hard-nosed and hard-hitting by staring straight into the camera and trying to give this – persona of hell i don't know of what and i really don't care we're gonna know on next tuesday how these races are going to shake out and 
they can clamor all they want to, and they can jump up and down, and they can try and scare the hell out of the Democratic Party, which, you know, I really find is ludicrous. Well, you know, when you're fighting someone in a battle, do you really want to give them all the ammunition they need to beat you? I, I think the answer is no to that. But in Fox's infinite wisdom, they just want to keep telling the Democrats, here's where you're failing, here's where you're failing, here's where you're failing. Okay. Keep stoking that pipe. Keep giving them the ammunition they need to try and recalibrate and revamp their campaign strategies. I think that's just a brilliant move on their part. And we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, these guys are out campaigning, Democrat, Republican, Independent, across the country, in the states where there's governor races, Congress races, of course, that's every two years, Senate races. They're all out there campaigning. They're the ones that know where they stand. Not the news, because they're just doing, well, we took a poll, and, and look up these poll numbers. Look at how many people they actually talked to, 1,500, maybe 2,000. Well, if you polled in Pittsburgh or Philadelphia or Austin, Houston, Corpus, Denver, Atlanta, what type of numbers do you think you're going to get? Well, they're probably going to favor liberal candidates, Democrats. Well, if you go to Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Amarillo, Lubbock, you're going to get conservatives. I mean, th this, this hasn't changed, but they want to make it seem so big. Metropolitan cities. The largest ones in the United States are Democratic. That's just the way it is. New York, Chicago, L.A. They're, they're Democrat right now. The Reagan years are over now. You know, when Reagan ran, yeah, he carried those states. I have to go back to see if he carried those cities. But, you know, San Francisco, a Republican running in San Francisco, good luck with that, Jack. Not saying it can't be done, but uh, the odds are definitely stacked against you just because of the last 20 years and cable news for the most part. Cable news is what has destroyed America on politics. You know, when CNN first started, they were really cool. I remember watching them because they covered the news. Now, I'd have to go back and see when that changed, but I'm guessing it changed when Fox came, when Murdoch put Fox on the scene. Fox has been around maybe 20 years or so, and that's where the opinion hour started, and then everyone went to it. I mean, because then you had, uh, oh, Bill Riley, who fell in disgrace over a sex scandal, you know, pinheads, that was his big thing. Pinheads, and then you had uh, Hannity, and I forgot the liberal guy, but it was like a crossfire show. Hannity and Holmes, that was, and I thought that was stupid because every time Hannity got a guest on, that like Michael Moore, who I can't stand, but every time he had Michael Moore on, Moore put him in his place, just shut him down, and Hannity's like, rah, 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 rah. he's just babbling. Idiots. Idiots. We don't have journalists anymore. And if you read any of the articles I post on Facebook, that's what journalism is. I take the facts. And I'll massage them a little, but I don't get off track. It's not my opinion. And I'm here to tell you, I don't know what Facebook did on their algorithms, but all of a sudden it just became a desolate landscape. People that used to come in all the time and comment, they just vanished. 
I don't know if they weren't getting the post or if they've been censored or what, but they created lively intellectual civil debates. I mean, oh, say, can you see? I'm very proud of that one. That was a reflection of what our flag is seen from the time it was Betsy Ross sewed it until 2020 and everything she has seen. And then I had one on stars and bars. And I'm a northerner. And when I moved to the south and people gave me grief about being a snowbird, it's like, hey, we won the war. Of course, that just stopped them. They're like, well, well, well. I said, we won the war. What do you want to debate? Almost didn't win it. If Lee wouldn't have made his colossal mistake at Gettysburg, he was such a master up until then of picking the time and the place to meet the Northern armies. This time he made a mistake. The, the North had the ground. In the past, Lee had the ground. But at Gettysburg, he just got sucked into it and sucked into it. And they were beaten, but both sides suffered a terrible loss. And then why didn't the North pursue Lee? I mean, his army was beaten. And they let him escape. It could have ended right there. Maybe. But they just sat back and did not pursue. Of course, they were pretty beaten up, too. But, uh, you know, yeah, there's an election next Tuesday. Go vote. Vote for your candidate of choice. Not who the news is telling you to vote for. Do your research. Look at the candidates. And I don't care if you're a hardline Republican. I don't care if you're a hardline Democrat. Make sure that vote you're casting is for the most qualified candidate. That's it. Do your own research. Don't rely on the media. Okay. Because every election is important. But it's not based on what the media says. Because they have their own agenda. All right. World Series game number three. There seems to be all types of hooting and hollering over McCullers. And in fact, I had a debate with my good friend, Wes Ford, on this, the conspiracy theory that, well, everybody wants Philly to win the game and he threw it and blah, blah, blah. And then I saw it on this site, Texas Uncensorship on Facebook, and one person was spouting off the same thing. And, you know, what a bunch of crap. You knew in the first inning, McCullers didn't have it. And it reminded me of when the Rangers brought you Darvis back too soon. In the playoffs, and he gave up three home runs in the first inning, and they pulled him. He just didn't have it. He hadn't recovered from Tommy John surgery. McCullers just didn't have it last night. And I thought it was really cool when Bryce Harper called Baum over and whispered something in his ear. And, of course, and Rosenthal, well, what would Bryce tell you? He's like, none of your damn business. And I don't want that little short bow tie son of a bitch in the dugout anyway. Get the hell out of there. These men are trying to do their job. And they don't need you in your face. Asking irrelevant questions that uh, if you wanted to be so involved in the game, well, maybe you should have played it. I'm sick of that. And they want to speed the game of baseball up, but they want to keep slowing it down with all of this bullshit from Tom Verducci and uh, Ken Rosenthal and whoever else they want to throw on the field. And I just loved it last night. I forgot what John Smoltz said, but Joe Davis started running off some BS and John almost told him to shut the hell up, just like Francona did with Joe Buck a couple of years back, like five or six years ago before he took the job with the Indians, when he was in between the Red Sox and the Indians and he was an announcer, that didn't last long because he pretty well told Joe Buck to screw himself. Joe said, you can't say that on the air. And Frank Cone said, I'll say whatever the hell I want to. I played the game. I've been on the field. You haven't. So why don't you just shut the hell up? 
Way to go, Terry. I like that. But my colors, any sane person could tell he's not, he doesn't have it tonight. We, we can't let this game get out of reach. I mean, the Phillies popped on three, four runs, three home runs. A two run blast, Harper, single shots, bomb, and uh, Schwarber. There is no tomorrow. This is game three. That means there's four games left. And then Smoltz goes on. Well, he needs to get five innings out of McCullough. For what? They don't need to give Philly any momentum. Have you not seen how well Philly has played at home this year in the playoffs? They have stomped people. And Baker just opened the door. Man, it is an uphill battle for Houston. They really need to win these next two. So they get back to Houston. They lose tonight. And uh, I don't see them coming back. Not the way the Phillies have played. They have been masters at once you've got your foot on someone's throat, keep squeezing. Keep them down. Don't let them back. And that's what they're doing. They lo Houston loses tonight. You stick a fork in them. This is not the Red Sox and the Yankees of what was that, 2004, where the Red Sox were down three games to one and Johnny Damon hit a home run that finally sparked the offense into action. And they did the unbelievable and won the next three games, went on to win the World Series. What was that, 04, 06? It's 04. But there's no conspiracy. McCullers had a bad night. Baker waited too long to pull him. But that aside, how many runs did the Astros score last night? Zero. So even at four to nothing, the Astros offense was stymied. Every time they got, you know, Nick Castellanos has just been phenomenal in the right field. He has killed several Houston rallies with great sliding catches, great sliding catches. Just, I love watching that. And I really don't care who wins this series, but I am kind of pulling for Philly because the reliever, Connor Brogdon, I've been following him since high school. His mom came on to my Facebook site, Baseball Cadillac Power Hitters Association. And she was asking for some pointers on her son's pitching. And I would watch it and I would send them over. And to see this kid flourish as a reliever in the majors has just been a thing of beauty. He is so smooth. His motion is so smooth. It's just ridiculously good. And his changeup is just plain nasty. And that's been his moniker since he's been pitching in the majors. He's got one of the best changeups there is. And no one can hit it. And he can almost throw it every pitch, and they still can't hit it. Like Nolan Ryan throwing a fastball. You can't hit this. It's great, but the argument with McCullers is lame. It's thin. When I coached, you know, oh, you know, people were talking about tipping. Well, he's tipping his pitches. Well, that's what we watch for. That's what, as coaches, that's what we tell our batters to do. When you're up there, whether you get on or not, what's that pitcher doing? And you need to relay that information to the next batter and so on and so forth down the line so you can see what's going on. So I would tell my catchers, you know the strike zone better than I do. I'm sitting off to the side. I can see if the pitch is at the knees or at the letters. That's all I can see. I can't see where it crosses the plate. You can. All I can do is judge it by where you catch it and where I see it cross. You're the one that sees what the umpire is calling, not me. And you need to tell the batters, hey, this is the zone today. He likes them inside. He likes them outside. He likes them at the knees. He likes a little below the knees. He likes it just above the belt. That's valuable information to the hitters. Well, Bryce Harper saw something that McCullers was doing. He passed it on to Bond, and Bond jacked it. That's good coaching. I remember as a coach watching this kid, and our guys were just striking out on this curveball, and I just started watching the pitcher. 
and I finally saw it. He would slow his motion down to throw a curveball. But I wanted to make sure, so I asked the assistant coach. Actually, we were co-coaches. I said, watch that picture and tell me what you see. He saw it. He goes, I think you're onto something. So then we had the on-deck batter, and we told him, watch this kid. From that point on, that pitcher's curveball didn't fool anybody because they all noticed the change in the delivery. Well, that's what went on with McCullers last night. And you can see it in the first inning. He was dropping his arm. He was falling off to the side of the mound. His mechanics were all screwed up. That's all there was to it. They were all screwed up. That's what Harper saw. And no conspiracy. It wasn't McCullers' night. That's all there was to it, and they left him in too long. But even if he'd have taken him out when it was four to nothing, since the Astros couldn't get anything going off of Suarez, the final would have been four to nothing. But all this talk of conspiracy is just that. It's more talk. It's just like the network's trying to, they, they say they're covering the election. No, they're not covering jack shit. They're just spouting off bullshit to keep their ratings up. That's all there is to it. Yes, some of these races are really close. Well, every year, every two years, we have close races. Every four years, we have close races. It's just, it's just the way it is. Now, the thing that I'm watching for that I keep telling my conservative friends, is let's see how many people vote in Georgia. Because I still have the numbers from 2020 during that runoff between Warnock and uh, hell, I forgot who he was running against. Because I remember doing the numbers. It's like, well, if all those independents vote for the Republican candidate, then he'll stomp Warnock. And that didn't happen. I want to see the numbers. I want to see how many people come out and vote, especially since there was so much hell raised over the new Georgia Jim Crow 2.0 voting law which it wasn't. If you'd have read it, you'd have seen what Georgia is doing. How dare they have people monitor the drop boxes? How dare they verify that person dropping off the ballot is authorized to drop that off? And that was the whole thing. They actually opened for two more Saturdays in early balloting. Yes, they decreased the number of drop boxes, but not this you know, we're picking them all up and, and and you can't vote. No, they're just being monitored. The ones in 2020 weren't monitored. And you saw that in uh, 2000 Mules, the movie that Dinesh did. They're unattended and people are showing up with 10, 15, 20 ballots. From who? Where'd they get them from? That's the question of the 2020 election. Well, you just you can't do that now. You show up, there's someone attending it. You have to have a notarized piece of paper that says, I am the authorized agent for this person and I am allowed to drop their vote in the ballot box. And the person will check it. They'll look at it. And if that person has 10 ballots, you better have 10 notarized papers authorizing you to deliver those ballots. Gee, what a novel idea. And you better have an idea, ID. You know, and, and all this crap about voter suppression and voter ID. Those that are too young, if you went to the store with a checking account and had a checking account and paid with a check, you better have a valid driver's license because they're going to run it. There's no place you can go without a ID to do anything. Yet people say, well, that's voter suppression. Well, tell me what you do, what you can do without a valid ID. Not much. You can't rent a car. You can't rent an apartment. You can't buy a house. You can't buy a car. And you can pick up a hooker. They're not going to ask for your ID. But anything, uh, you want to open a 
bank account. You got a ballot ID. You can't just walk in there and say, well, I'm Joe Blow. This is my social security number. I don't have a driver's license, blah, blah, blah. They want to see it. And when I was in construction and I hired people, you better have two forms of identification, ballot driver's license and social security number. You only have one, can't hire you. I need two. What a novel idea. Oh, civil defense sirens are going off. They're doing their monthly check in Dallas. But, you know, yes, there's an election on Tuesday. Go out and vote. Vote for the best candidate that's out there. Not by what the press says, by, but by what you think. And tonight is game four. I'm looking for, I, I hope it's a really good game. And this one really is a must win for the Astros. They lose this, they'll lose tomorrow. That momentum in Philly is ridiculous. Now, Philly fans, I got one problem with you all. What was this bullshit chant of Houston sucks? They're in the World Series. Obviously, they don't suck. They won over 100 games. You didn't. <coughs> so, they don't suck. You know, Let's show a little class and booing the opposing team. That's not classy when they're announced. That That's really not classy. And that goes for any stadium. This is the World Series. Show some class. If this was in St. Louis, they would not be booing the opposition unless they really didn't like a player. But even then, it'd be a murmur. But in Philly, I mean, it was, they were very loud. They were very boisterous about booing the Astros. If the Yankees came to play the Rangers in the American League Championship game, the pennant game, I'm not booing the Yankee players. They earned it. They're there. They have great players. I'm not booing them. Because if they beat my team, well then, I look like the fool. And I'm not going to do that. All right. Well, that's all I got for today. Getting ready to do my two-mile walk. And that's something I do every day. This is my Herbalife shake. It's kind of dirty. Didn't clean it yet. But every day, I do that. This canister, terrible glare, is... This flavor is cookies and cream. <coughs> I had, before this, I had caramel banana. That was pretty good. I kind of like that. Eight years ago when I did this, I lost 25 pounds in two and a half months. But I also walked two miles a day. And I watch all these commercials for Golo and Noom and all this. Losing weight is always a good thing, but you've got to throw some exercise in there. Otherwise, you're not going to keep it off. Your body's not going to be healthy. And that's what Herbalife is all about, is maintaining health year-round. Not just for today, not just for tomorrow, but year-round. And I think it's the LA Galaxy soccer team. They are all promoting Herbalife. But there's a catch. They have to use the products for three years before they are allowed to do promotions for the company. How about that? You know any other celebrity that you see on TV that is promoting something that had to do it for three years before they were allowed to come on? and promote the company, I don't know of any, none. Now, of course, you got Shaquille, who he owns a Domino's franchise. So, yeah, he's been doing it more than three years. But I think that's what all the sponsorships need to do. All the sponsors need to do is we want you to promote this, but you're going to have to use it.
and you're going to have to believe in the product because if you don't, we don't need you. And that's what separates Herbalife from a lot of these other companies. They want you to stay healthy and they've got a whole line of them. I am a distributor. I am a user. It's good stuff. Okay. That's enough for today. I will check in tomorrow. We will talk to you then.